Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Misty Hino with Misty Hino's Lego Robotics. Thank you for joining me today. I'm gonna to be letting you know, Mr. Hino, I'm starting First Lego League Coaching. What do I do? I'm kind of in the same boat because I'm in a different state. Um, I was in California, now Tennessee. So I'm having to get used to just the different scheduling and just the different ways that, you know, First Lego League is handled. But hey, we're in the same boat and I'm gonna be throwing you guys a timeline no matter where you are, you know, no matter what your schedule's like, I'm gonna be giving you like a, you know, three weeks, one week, month kind of thing. So no matter what your schedule is, you'll be able to go, okay, I'm in the one month range here and you know, this is what I do. So my goal today is just, to, you know, let you see like a blueprint of what to do, what to be expecting, some thinking ahead. So that way you're not caught off guard and you're definitely not caught being late on something okay first of all i wanted to let you know that if you've decided to coach first lego league you will not regret it it's one of those decisions um where you you know the first time you do it i know you're scared i know you're like ah there's a million things to think about but once you do it for one year you can look back and go ah i know what i would fix i know what i would change i know what i would continue to do and you'll just continue to get better the more you do this. So don't feel nervous. I'm going to be with you here to answer any of your questions. And we're just going to take it real slow. But we're starting off with this new season of Unearth. And just so that, you know, you can just feel like, okay, I'm in the right range. Because anytime you're doing something new, you just feel like you're preparing as best you can. And then you just let the students take over. You know, you can sit back. And not completely relax, but you can at least feel good that you've done everything you can. And then, you know, you can motivate them and, you know, things like that. But other than that, let's get rolling. So right now, we're in the early part of the season. So here's the first thing you need to be thinking about is registration. You know, getting your team registered so you have, um, and you can always change the team name, but you can get a team number and that they got your money and they know you're registered. And then they can start to get the ball rolling with your materials, your, you know, your, your set, you know, your project robot game materials. So that's the big part. Now, before you go, whoa, there is so much involved, you know, as far as costs go, you're right. It's going to be, you know, it's not going to be cheap. A registration, I believe, is $275. Um, and you know, you might be going, well, where in the world am I going to get that money? Um, I can let you know now because I was held to secrecy on social media here, but past August 15th, now I can tell everybody, I wrote a grant for $5,000 here in Tennessee and I got it. And so what I'm going to do is buy spike prime kits for my class. And I also included in that $5,000 registration for this year's unearth and t-shirts and so i was just so excited i'm like yes that's you know money that i don't need to worry about where it's going to come from so the first thing i would do is reach out and see if you can find robotics grants in your state i would probably just google robotics grants in whatever state you live in um, i'm going to be honest they are looking to fund serious teams that are going to try to, you know, if not just your school, try to fund teams that are really serious about doing well, getting better, learning, um, you know, all of the STEM standards. They're looking to fund these uh, teams and because they just know how awesome it is. So definitely reach out uh, reach out to your school and see if there's any funding available. A lot of times they'll have, you know, donations. Uh, sometimes the school can throw that out and go, hey, we have a robotics team, but they need some money. You just need to do that early because you want to get registered as soon as possible because First Lego League does have a cutoff to register. So you don't want to wait too long. And then people are like, well, why didn't you say anything? Uh, so start throwing those feelers out. So we're looking at grants. We're looking at your school. We're looking at, you know, just somebody who's willing to maybe donate that money. But if they don't know, they cannot donate. So just definitely throw that out there and just cover all your bases. Okay, I wrote 
a grant, I'm getting nothing, let's talk to my school. Definitely do all that before you start dipping into your own pockets because you're really not supposed to, you know, not that you're not supposed to, but that's really not something you should have to do. It should be something that, you know, somebody is willing to fund, okay? Then the next thing you need to think about is a robotics kit. Are you guys gonna go EV3? Are you gonna go Spike Prime? Are you gonna go all the way back to NXT? I mean, you're just gonna have to figure out, okay, once I get my team assembled, which I'm gonna get to in a, in a second, what kind of kit are you gonna get? Now, when you register with FIRST, they'll give you an option. Do you wanna pay for the Spike Prime kit? And that's something you just need to know. No, no, thank you. We already got the kit we're you know, going to need. I'm going to buy it you know, some, with some other way. Um, but definitely know what kit you're going to use. Which now leads me into start thinking about your team. How are you going to assemble this team? And how many team members are you looking to get? Now, I normally don't like to throw this out there because everybody's different. Uh, but I like to keep my teams rather small. Here's why. My first year, um, I had a team of 10. And it, don't get me wrong, you know, the saying, the more, the merrier, it, it that pretty was, you know, that was pretty true. It was fun. Um, but it was a hassle figuring out what everybody was going to do. You know, it's like having a basketball team with 12 players, you know, it's like, okay, I got my starting five. What do I do with my other folks, you know? And it's, it's hard to manage. Um, we did end up winning an award for core values because they were like, whoa, look at all these 10 students that are working really well together. Um, trust me, I don't know how that happened. Uh, but anyway, for management's sake, I like to keep it five or under. So you're gonna to have to maybe have your own magic number. Uh, maybe you're trying to get as many students involved as possible. That's awesome too. Um, and then you're gonna to have to figure out how do they get onto the team? Do I hand pick it? Do you put up some kind of tryouts? Uh, I actually have done both and they were all pretty much successful because the ones that truly were you know, serious were the ones that really stood out among all the ones that were kind of just like, eh, I really don't care. I just decided to show up for your tryout. And then for your tryouts, you might just say, hey, you know, we're going to program this. Let's see how you do. Um, and, you know, you can also take into account their work habits. I mean, these might, hopefully these are students you've had for a while. You can kind of know what they're like. Um, so you, you can go either route you know, tryouts or just hand pick them. Uh, maybe ask your administrator or if you're the one in charge, hey, you don't, you don't have to ask anybody. Um, so definitely, um, again, registration, what kind of robotic kit you're gonna use and how are you going to assemble your team? And then I, I would say lastly, maybe just figure out how are you gonna run this? How are you, how are you gonna get your help? Um, are you gonna have parent volunteers? Are you gonna run this, the whole show yourself? And then I would say, lastly, before I leave you is what, you know, how often are you going to meet? Because I would definitely have some type of meeting with the students and their parents. Once you have figured out how they're going to be on your team, they're going to have to figure out how often do we meet? So now you're going to have to do some time management and go, how much time do I got? Okay, I can donate a Wednesday after school or, you know, whatever your time frame is, but stick to it. You know what I mean? If you're going to commit to Tuesday, Thursdays from 3.30 to 4.30 or 5, whatever, stick to that, you know, because the kids, they need that structure. They need that commitment because we can't demand that they commit if we're not committing to. So, um, before I would leave you today, I would also think about what are you going to use for your first Lego League board, which will leap into my next video that I show you because if for those of you that are like, I don't have the materials or the know-how to make my own first Lego League board, I have a cheap um, alternative for you, but that's going to be in my next video. But that would be the last thing I would say I, in these last, or in these first three weeks, I would say, 
be thinking about the registration, what kit you're going to use, how are you going to assemble your team, what days are you going to meet, and what are you going to use for your first LEGO League board. Are you going to, you can try to Facebook Marketplace and find somebody who's donating it. My very first first LEGO League board was donated to me. I was like, rock on, threw it in the back of my truck, took it to school. I ha I've had it ever since. Um, but then you can also think about, okay, could we possibly make it? Uh, but the next thing I have for you in my next video would be a board from Geyer. I'll leave you their link in the description, but I'm not going to talk about it today because I haven't assembled it yet. I wanted to show it to you guys before I, you know, I wanted to put it together and then show it to you. And then I'll talk about it. Um, but it's a first Lego League alternative board. It's a, a lot cheaper than it would be to buy one or make one. And it's it has its pros and it has its cons, but it's something that you can at least say, hey, my kids can practice on it. We can set up all the, the robot game models. So there you go. So guys, I am with you. If you have any questions, throw it down in the comments section. For my first Lego League experts, let me know if I forgot anything. You know, what should everybody be thinking in the first three weeks of this first Lego League unearthed season? Um, and then we'll get into the nitty gritty about the robot game and your innovative project. That all can come later. I don't want to overwhelm you guys, okay? Thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, continue to, you know, watch my videos, hit that like and that subscribe button because as we take this journey together, I don't want you to miss a video because you can miss something super important that will help out your team, okay? Thank you so much for watching. I am Mr. Hino from Mr. Hino's Lego Robotics. I am out. He's out. He's out. We got this. We got this. We got this, guys. Hey guys, Mr. Hino here. Thank you so much for watching. And if you love robotics, don't forget to check out these videos also because they're cool. Okay guys, take care.